everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day, and today I'll be talking about The One by Kira Cass, the final book in the Selection Trilogy. And because this is the conclusion to the trilogy, this review will be filled with spoilers, so if you haven't read The One and you wish not to be spoiled for the trilogy, I would suggest leaving now. Right now. Like, now. Okay. Bye! Alright, let's talk about The One. Honestly, I thought it was exactly what I expected it to be after reading the first two books in the trilogy. First things first, I really don't understand why Kira Cass made this trilogy a dystopian one, because all her attempts at creating a dystopian atmosphere were really poor, and no one reads these books for the rebellion anyways. People read these books because they want the romance, and the drama, and the fluff, and let's be honest, the covers are beautiful. But anyway, the series ends exactly how you'd expect it to end because these books are just really fluffy, so you just know you're going to have a happy ending, like a Disney Channel movie. And although the one was just another installment of fluff and very little plot development, like Jenny from Jellify called it the Elite 2.0, which is so true. The ride to the end is entertaining nonetheless. Let's talk about America Singer. America, she can be so dense, but you know she has a good heart. Sometimes she gets really good ideas, but the way that she executes them makes me want to throw myself against a brick wall. But yeah, you can tell that America is a very sweet girl, even though she can be really irrational. And Maxon is a really nice guy. He can be really sweet and romantic, but he can also be really childish and whiny. Like, it worries me that this is the guy who's going to be running the country because sometimes his decision-making skills are severely lacking. And although I wouldn't want him as my ruler, he's still a really sweet guy. Like, the letters that he wrote to America when America was away for her father's death were so sweet, they were so sappy and cute, it was just adorable. I still can't get over the fact that this trilogy was a trilogy, because it really didn't need to be a trilogy. It could have been just one solid good novel with a very great plot, if all the useless back and forth and the unnecessary fluff were taken out. Like, reading the same scenes over and over again, you know, like the fighting, and then the making up, and then the ignoring, and then the making out, it just got really tiring. It was an endless cycle throughout all three books, and I felt like I just, I wanted the plot to diverge from that. <laughs> diverge. Like, divergent. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, so we knew that America and Maxon were going to end up together, because let's face it, the title of the book is The One, and... On the cover, America's wearing a white dress. You just you put two and two together and you know. So the fact that the selection, like the actual competition, drags on for three books was just a crazy long amount of time. And it was just frustrating because Max and America so clearly had feelings for each other, but they would just continue going back and forth and stressing over who would say, I love you first. And they would always think of like excuses not to be together. It just made the plot seem really unnecessary, and it got old. It got old in the first book, so you can imagine how old it gets by the third book. And I feel kind of spiteful about this because, seriously, the plot could have been so much better if Kira Cass shifted the focus away from the romance and the drama for like two seconds to maybe develop the world a little bit better or give a bit of logic behind the government. I wanted more logic and explanation behind everything and we don't get it in the first two books so I was kind of like, okay Kira Cass, maybe you're holding out on us and maybe you'll let us know stuff in the third book and everything will be fleshed out. But no, we didn't get that. Like for most of the book, the plot just kind of wandered around in circles and nothing really happened until the very last chunk of the book and then during that part of the book everything just came crashing down and it was so rushed 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 like first we have Max in ending the selection finally and choosing America and then we have Max in finding out that Aspen was America's first love and that he was in the palace the whole time which by the way let me just talk about that scene because I was really excited for it and I was so underwhelmed because it was literally after 
Maxon and America had slept together, not like slept together, but like slept in the same bed. So Maxon just seemed really childish in the way that he reacted, like he didn't even think anything through. He could have just handled it so much better and then he like last minute changed his mind and was like, you know what, I think I'm going to choose Chris as my wife. And which, by the way, no reader believed, right? Like you didn't believe that for a second. And then there was the huge attack. And, of course, as usual, whenever there's something mildly exciting about the Rebels, America is immediately whisked off from the scene, so we don't get to see any of it. Can we talk about how convenient it was that the King was murdered during the attack? Like, yes, let's eliminate the only obstacle toward a safer and better future in one scene where the protagonist isn't even present. Like, all the threats were eliminated in that scene, and we don't even see any of it. It was just so convenient. Like, the evil king died, and the bad rebels were overwhelmed and overpowered by the good rebels. Yay! So convenient. So convenient. But that's what you expect when you go into a series like this one. Of course, there's also the really convenient event of Aspen and Lucy having their little thing together, and it was just so obvious. Everyone knew it was coming. And Aspen is always trying to tell America, like, hey, America, I love you, but... And then America's like, no, 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 I can't, I can't hear it right now. And it's like, America, let him talk. It's so painfully obvious that Aspen and Lucy have their thing going on. And the fact that America couldn't see it, she's just so dense sometimes. Also, after reading The Elite, I watched Christine from Poland Banana's books, book talk on the elite and she had this theory that America's father was a rebel and after I watched that I was like oh my god that makes complete sense how did I not catch that on my own so it made so much sense that I just kind of accepted it as canon and so when America found out that her dad was a rebel I was like what how are you just now discovering this and then I realized that it hadn't been officially revealed yet but yeah it was revealed and it didn't really add anything to the plot, but, you know, it explained his behavior. He freaking named his child America, for God's sakes. Oh, let's talk about how Celeste had this complete 180 character change. I can't remember ever reading a book with such an abrupt change in character like that. The girl who clawed her competitors and put glass in their shoes and ripped their dresses was suddenly everyone's BFF. Like, uh, yeah, okay. That seems realistic. But again, it's what you'd expect from a trilogy like this one. And I did like Nice Celeste because it did provide a nice sense of sisterhood between the remaining elite. And it was so nice to read about that friendship and that bond. And then, you know, Celeste died. Which, by the way, added nothing to the plot. So yeah, this trilogy is just really fluffy, filled with drama and romance. The characters aren't extremely well-rounded and the plot is really simple and predictable. But the story is entertaining. It's very easy to read and the ending is satisfying. The ending didn't bring anything surprising or refreshing or new to the table, but it was enjoyable nonetheless. These books are just quick and fun and light and really easy to get through. They don't require much thinking, so you know, you just let them take you on a ride and try not to think too hard about it while you're on it. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the one. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all are having a fantastic day and happy reading. Goodbye. When Celeste is like, someone recently reminded me that I don't need a man to get what I want out of life. I was like, ooh girl, Celeste is a strong independent woman who don't need no man.